Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned to hear more about everything Skillshare has to offer. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel, and here at Pencil Stash, I do coloring tutorials. Everything from individual pencil techniques to full-on color alongs, and all of them have me kind of verbally walking you through what I'm doing. So it's a great place to learn if you're new to coloring, or even if you're a longtime coloring enthusiast that just kind of wants to maybe expand some of their skill sets. So check out the back catalog and subscribe if you're interested in hearing more. So today, we are going to be continuing our Back to Basics series. Now, in the last video, I did kind of a high-level overview of coloring for beginners. If you guys missed that, I'll leave a link to it up in the right-hand corner and in the description below. And so today, we're actually going to be going a bit deeper into one of those fundamental techniques that you're definitely going to want to learn, and that is layering. So let's dive right in. All right, today I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can apply a layering technique. Now I've drawn two little apple shapes to just kind of demonstrate each. It's better than just a little circle. Now on this first apple, we're just gonna layer with one single color, one pencil, and it's gonna be this red pencil right here. So the first thing that you wanna know about layering and get really accustomed to doing is using very light pressure. Now, layering colored pencil is all about multiple layers of really thin levels or coats. Kind of think of it like those crepe cakes. Have you guys ever seen those? Like really super thin layers stacked right over top of each other makes for a really kind of stable, rich outcome. Same thing with pencils. And using light pressure can absolutely take some getting used to. Now, I know a lot of us struggle with pressing too hard, being a little bit too heavy handed. So until you have good control in using that light pressure, holding the pencil the normal way, you might want to try to hold your pencil a little bit further back from the tip, maybe about halfway. It's a good way to train yourself since you actually won't be able to press the pencil too hard. And using light pressure is a fantastic way to hide your pencil strokes. If you use really, really hard-handed pressure, you're actually gonna see those lines. You're gonna see those lines, you're gonna see those curly cues, you know, whatever, whatever kind of technique that you prefer, it's going to be much more visible. And so if you're using light, light pressure, it's actually a lot harder to see your pencil strokes and you can kind of make them a bit invisible. Definitely another plus. All right, we have one layer down. Now it looks really light, right? And you can see all those kind of like weird little white dots and those spaces kind of in between of that paper where your pencil was unable to cover, right? You can see that. Well, if you want a smoother, kind of more saturated look, you want to eliminate as much of that white space as you can. And that's where layering comes in. So with our same color, our same pencil here, let's add another layer right over top of this one. Again, using very light pressure. Now, this one color layering technique works really well if you like just kind of a nice flat, almost like an ink and paint type of finish, but it also works on kind of smaller objects that you may encounter on a coloring page. They may not require a whole bunch of detail, but you still want uh, it to be very saturated, very smooth, very finished looking. So you can apply this technique in that scenario as well. All right, two layers down, looks pretty good. But I still see some of that white space. We're going for a bit of a smoother finish. So let's add another layer. And another layer. All right, here it is. We have four layers of the same red pencil. Now, these are the types of results that you're able to achieve just by layering multiple thin coats of the same color. And I'm not saying that four layers is the magic number. It actually doesn't matter. It's all about the finished uh, look that you're trying to achieve. So if you can achieve the look that you want in two layers or three layers or four layers, you know, it really just depends too on, you know, how thin of a layer that you're putting down. If you're super, super light handed, you know, you might need four layers. So definitely play around with it and play around until you kind of get that finished look that you're going for. And if you want an even smoother finish, 
I like to blend my work with a bit of a dry cotton swab. Now this helps to fill in even more of those little white open spaces and those dots that are so difficult to fill in. It just kind of grabs some of that pigment, just kind of pushes and pulls it and just kind of smooths over all of those edges, all those little transition areas, all those little white spaces and just gives you a nice smooth finish. On to our second apple. Now with this one, we're gonna utilize all these colors in my hands here. How many is this? There's 10 colors here, as opposed to just the one that we used on the previous apple. So now I'm sure that you have noticed that apples and, and most objects actually are not just one color. They have variations, they have imperfections, they have highlights and shadows and texture. So, so many variations. So this technique is really the way to go if you're wanting to give your colored pencil work a little bit more of a realistic appearance. So our apple, it's organic, it's all natural. So it's got lots and lots of colors. It's got pinks and greens and oranges and reds and even a dark purple. And I like to start uh, a piece using my lightest colors. So I'll typically place those down in the areas that I want them as well as expanding that area just a little bit to cover a larger area that I might have in mind when my piece is finished. And that's because we're gonna be overlapping a lot of these colors and kind of feathering them together. Not only to create new colors, but also to create soft transitions between where those two colors meet. Now, my process looks a little bit ridiculous at first. As you can see, I'm just kind of placing down like random splotches of color onto an object. I actually joke and call it bad camo. But what you'll start to see is that when you fill in those spaces with color, again, using that light pressure, you're actually gonna start to bring your colors together and just sort of overlap them a little bit, kind of just feathering them together into areas where you've placed other color down. And you're gonna see that you start something new. You're gonna get something new, something only that those two or that grouping of colors can create. And if you're using that light pressure, your pencil strokes or the marks made by your pencil will again largely be invisible. They'll blend those two colors seamlessly together. That's why when I put my colors down, I make them a touch bigger than I intended to so that I do have that area of overlap kind of in between them to work with. Now we've got our apple kind of covered for the most part in color. It still, you know, looks very much like that bad camo. But now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some of this kind of yellowish green right over top, even over my red areas. And maybe not over the entire apple, but into some areas that I just kind of maybe want to embellish a little bit. And what this is gonna do is add just a touch or kind of an undertone of green that's going to actually help our apple to feel even more realistic. So again, another layer. It'll be largely kind of imperceptible, but you will definitely still kind of see that and it will make it look even more realistic. Then I'm gonna add in some of this purple here at the bottom. And this can act as our shading and some of our darker spots on our apple. And it's especially important to keep using that light pressure with your darker colors, as these can be quite strong. And you want the flexibility and the control to be able to choose how aggressive you want to be with some of your colors, especially your dark colors. You can always add additional colors, you know, additional layers on top, but it's very difficult to take them away. Then I can continue to tweak this. I can add some additional reds and some oranges, you know, fill in some of the areas where I still see some of that white paper space kind of peeking through. Now I'll use another dry cotton swab to blend on this apple. And this is really gonna seal the deal and bring all these colors together very harmoniously. All these edges, you know, maybe where two colors meet like a yellow or a green, you know, meet a red, it's gonna smooth that transition area and it's gonna look a lot more natural. And by the time you're done, after adding all these colors and all these passes, you've got a bunch of layers on this apple too all of them making up a smooth and harmonious finished product. 
Now, I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial on layering. We went a bit more in depth uh, than we did in the last video, so I do hope that it, uh, you got something out of it. Now, my plan is to cover one new foundational technique every month, and it'll be just part of a new kind of beginner series. Then we'll do some full page kind of color alongs in between. And I do hope that you'll join me for those. If you do, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and leave me a comment down below. Thanks again to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. If you liked learning from me today, you'll love learning from all the talented creators on Skillshare's platform. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 28,000 classes in design, art, business, and so much more. If you want to improve your knowledge on any topic, Skillshare has a class for you. Like this class, Modern Money Habits, Five Steps to Build the Life You Want with Justin Bridges. Now, I'm a personal finance geek, so seeing these personal finance fundamentals taught in such an approachable way is fantastic. Premium membership to Skillshare gives you unlimited access to classes, communities, and workshops that are just right for you and your learning goals. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even learn a new skill to further your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. So join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for Pencil Stash viewers. The first 1,000 viewers that click the link below in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium Skillshare membership. Now beyond those two months, Skillshare is super affordable with an annual subscription being less than $10 per month. And with all the growth potential that these classes have to offer, that is a fantastic investment in yourself and your personal development. Act now for this special offer and start learning with Skillshare today.